Hey, what's up guys? Today I've got a quick video showcasing what I think are the best JDM or Japanese cars in GTA 5 as of 2023. Considering factors like each car's inspiration, cost, customization, and performance, I picked out my absolute top 10 favorites and today I'm going to be showing you them in an unranked list format. With that said, let's get to it. So kicking off this list, we've got the jack of all trades, the Anis LG Retro Custom. This is easily the most iconic JDM car within GTA 5 since its main inspirations are the Nissan Skyline R32 and R33 GTRs with some R34 styling cues in there as well. As for cost, the LG Retro offers great value. It's going to cost you just over a million dollars for the base car, but that's really not a bad price considering the modern GTA economy. Being a Benny's car, the LG Retro has a ton of great customization, lots of options throughout the exterior interior and the engine bay to create a wide array of unique builds plus it's got some really cool and authentic jdm and fast and furious liveries too now for performance the lg retro might not have a good top speed but it accelerates and handles incredibly well because it's all-wheel drive it gets up to speed super quickly and obviously has a lot of grip to corner confidently which makes it a great contender in the sports class on corner heavy tracks another added bonus is that the lg retro is an awesome all-wheel drive drift car after you stance the car manually and equip low grip tires if you really are looking for the whole package, the Anis LG Retro Custom is a great choice for sure. Very closely related to the Anis LG Retro Custom is the OG Anis LG RH8. Although this car has definitely been overshadowed by the LG Retro, I thought it was still worth mentioning because this car still holds its own after being in the game now for over a decade. The LG RH8 is pretty unique in terms of styling, obviously being mainly based off of a Nissan R35 GTR, but also having styling cues from some other cool Toyota concept cars. Now for you new players, the LG RH8 is one of the best budget cars you can get in GTA 5 since it only costs $95,000 or you can get it for completely free if you've got your social club account set up and linked. Now, as for customization, the RH8 really doesn't offer much, but it also doesn't need a lot to make it look clean anyways. The fitment and the stance of the car is already great to begin with, and you can complement that with the small bumper, skirt, and spoiler options that it offers. As for performance, the RH8 still manages to stay towards the upper echelon of the sports class when it comes to handling, and actually competes with a lot of tuners and other recent DLC vehicles, which is awesome considering this car's age. Although the RH8 does lack in some areas there's no denying its best bang for buck performance and accessibility to all players both new and old and if you ever get bored of it you can head right over to Benny's and upgrade it straight to the LG Retro Custom. Now moving along with the Anis cars on this list, we've got the Anis Remus. This was another absolute banger car to come with the LS Tuners update, given that it's mainly based off of a Nissan Silvia S13. Now although this car is pretty expensive, as could be expected nowadays, uh, it does cost between $1 million and $1.4 million for the base car. However, it still offers really good value for the money. There's a ton of unique and diverse customization options all over the car, including some really cool Rocket Bunny inspired body kits and a huge array of liveries for whatever build you'd like to do. Plus it offers decent wheel fitment without looking too awkward. Performance wise, the Remus doesn't offer much given that it was lumped into the sports class. However, it does offer enough power and great handling to be an awesome drift car. This is one of the better drift cars to come from the LS Tuners update as this car holds decent angle. It's got a strong mid-drive speed boost and obviously offers a ton of cool drift inspired customization to match. This is definitely a cool authentic JDM car worth picking up if you somehow don't already own one. The next car here is one of the more recent additions to GTA 5, the Dinka Kanjo SJ. Now, although the majority of the player base didn't really care much for this car, given that it's based off of an old and boring Honda Civic EG Coupe, it still has a ton of really cool quirks that definitely made it worth discussing in this video. Obviously, given the inflation rates of GTA 5, this car is insanely overpriced, costing the exact same amount of money as the Anus Remus we just covered. However, the Kanjo SJ offers a lot of customization options all over the place, including a lot of different bumpers, exhaust, spoilers, liveries and plenty of interior and engine mods too. Plus this car has got some cool suspension mods and you can also stance this thing via the interaction menu. It makes me think that this car was supposed to release with the LS Tuners update but Rockstar held it back for some reason. Now, as for performance, obviously the Conjo SJ, you really can't expect much from this car to begin with. Uh, what's especially unfortunate is that Rockstar decided to throw this car in the coupes class which is heavily dominated by much faster cars so the Conjo SJ really won't hold a candle to those. If it had been added to the compacts class with the Ballista Con it would have been a lot more balanced, that's Rockstar logic I guess. The Kanjo SJ, despite being super expensive, is still a really cool and well modifiable car that definitely is true to the culture. 
Now, while I'm at it, I figure I should mention here the Dink Up Lista Kanjo as well as kind of a small honorable mention. Now, although this version of the Kanjo doesn't offer nearly as much customization as the Kanjo SJ, it is much more reasonably priced being in the four to $500,000 range and offers way better performance since it's in the compact class and is therefore a lot more balanced. Plus, this version of the Kanjo is based off of the Civic EK hatch rather than the EG Coupe, which might be a more desirable body style depending on your taste. Or at the end of the day, if you've got the money for both the Blista Kanjo and the Kanjo SJ, just snag both versions. Next up, we've got a personal favorite car of mine, the Dinka RT3000. This is another banger car that was added with the tuners update, and in my opinion, it's got so many different reasons for you to want to buy it. First off, it's inspired after the legendary Honda S2000, which helped revive the Dinka brand a bit in my opinion. In addition to that, it's a convertible, which the game was definitely lacking at the time it was released. However, given the modern economy of GTA 5, you will have to pay to play with this car. It does cost between 1.3 and 1.7 million dollars, but in exchange for that, you get a lot of really cool customization, but it is lacking in some areas. It would have been nice to see some more options for the skirts on this car. Plus this car doesn't offer any Fast and Furious inspired liveries, which is definitely disappointing. However, when it comes to performance, the RT3000 is a pretty rowdy and fun car. Because it's in the sports class, the car doesn't offer much in terms of racing, but outside of that, it's got really decent power and very well-balanced handling. This car's biggest highlight by far is its driftability. When it's fully upgraded and has low grip tires or is stance through the interaction menu, either or not both in my opinion, it's one of the best drift cars in the game. The RT3000 offers insane amounts of steering angle, agile handling for weight transfers, and about the same amount of power as the Bravado Banshee 900R. This is overall just a blast of a car that's worth buying regardless of whether or not you want to drift with it. Another awesome GDM car that's pretty overlooked nowadays is the Emperor Vector. Releasing back with the tuners update, this was one of the cars that the community didn't really want, but was ultimately pleased to get, at least based off what I've heard and seen. Uh, as is the trend with cars from the tuners DLC, the Vector is very expensive, costing between 1.3 and 1.7 million dollars for the base car. That's not to say that it's not worth it though. The Vector's main inspiration is the Lexus RCF, and Rockstar decided to recreate the IRL Rocket Bunny wide body kit for this car in GTA 5, along with some really cool wide body options. There's plenty of other exterior mods to dress up this car however you like. It's actually in the top 10 for the most modifiable cars in GTA 5. In addition to that, the Vector has great fitment and can be absolutely slammed to the ground if that's your thing. Moving into performance, the Vector really is a jack of all trades. It offers stable, albeit kind of understeery handling and great acceleration thanks to its all-wheel drive drivetrain. It performs well around a track, although it does lack top speed in comparison to the other sports class cars it's competing against. However, it does dominate in the tuner subclass races if anybody is still doing those nowadays. Now, in addition to offering great customization and performance, the Vector is also another awesome all-wheel drive drift car. It's got the right weight distribution and torque to be able to slide very easily with low grip tires and the lowered stance equipped. Although this car does seem a little boring on the surface compared to the other JDM cars that we have, it's still a very fun and fast ride that's definitely worth picking up. Another very popular competitor to the Emperor Vector and another absolute banger car to come with the LS Tuners update was the Karen Calico GTF. Again, this was a car that nobody was really asking for due to it being based off of the more obscure Toyota Celica GT4, but still, this car definitely exceeded our expectations. Although this car cost between $1.5 and $2 million for the base car, there's still plenty of things about the Calico to justify that price tag. This is actually the second most modifiable car in the game, only behind the Vapid Dominator ASP, so obviously it's it's got a ton of varied customization all over the place. I'm personally a big fan of all the bumper, skirt, and spoiler options as they are all pretty significantly different and can totally change the look of the car. In addition to that, it's got a bunch of cool rally and early 2000s street racer inspired liveries to fit pretty much whatever build you're doing. Now, although the Calico GTF is based off of a mid-90s Toyota Celica GT4, it still offers an insane amount of performance. In my opinion, it's one of the cooler sleepers in the game. It's all-wheel drive, so it's got plenty of traction and a very strong launch, although it can be pretty under understeery in the turns. Like we saw with the Vector, the Calico GTF is another really dominant car in the tuner subclass. On the other hand, the Calico is a bit higher in the larger sports class in terms of both top speed and performance over the Vector that we just covered. Overall, the Calico GTF is super fast, modifiable, and fun. It's definitely a no-brainer for your JDM car collection.
Now this wouldn't be a best JDM cars list without mentioning the Karen Fudo GTX. This car has been a mainstay among the best JDM cars in GTA 5 ever since it dropped with the LS Tuners DLC back in 2021. It's based off of the extremely iconic Toyota Corolla A86 Sprinter Trano, and the enthusiast tax in real life has definitely been reflected in its price here in GTA 5, with its base price being between $1.2 and $1.6 million. However, for this price, I think it's well worth it. The Fudo GTX is one of the most modifiable cars in the game, with plenty of authentic drift style liveries to outfit this car like the A86 from the initial D anime, or an old D1 GP style drift car, alongside some cool bumper engine and exhaust and interior options too. Now obviously the Fudo GTX is not a performance beast by any means, unfortunately it is drastically underpowered and doesn't have good handling compared to most other cars in the sports class, however you can still have an absolute blast drifting this car. In my opinion the Fudo GTX is the best beginner drift car in the game, which is actually why I used it in my full length drift tutorials. Feel free to check those out by the way if you're interested. This car is amazing for drifting. It's got great power to keep long drifts going with a very consistent mid-drive speed boost. It holds an absolute ton of angle and is definitely agile enough to toss it pretty much any corner and perform any kind of entry you'd like. The amount of fun you can have with the Fudo GTX makes up for its lack of performance and definitely justifies that high price tag. Now given that I am mentioning the Karen Fudo GTX here, I've got to include another honorable mention and that is of course the OG Karen Fudo. Despite this car being removed for purchase from the in-game websites, luckily you can still find this car right off the street and you can have it modified for dirt cheap. Although it's not nearly as modifiable as the GTX version, there's still quite a few cool and authentic mods for the OG version of the Fudo. That's not even mentioning the fact that the Fudo is also an awesome drift car, especially for beginners and budget-minded players. If for whatever reason you don't already have an OG Fudo, definitely pick one up ASAP. This car is the definition of cheap fun. And the last Karen car that we'll be covering here in this video is the Karen Sultan RS. Now this car's been in the game for a while now, and although it's not as popular as it once was, I still believe it's an awesome car worth talking about. Now the Sultan RS was actually introduced in GTA 4 as a very unique cross between a Lexus IS300 and a Subaru Impreza GC8, and now in GTA 5 we have the exact same car but with plenty of additional tuning parts. So for about $800,000 you can upgrade a normal Karen Sultan to the Sultan RS, and with that comes a lot of cool bump spoiler, livery, and interior options to kit this car out however you'd like. There's also a couple Fast and Furious inspired liveries in there as well. Now when it comes to performance, the Karen Sultan RS was done extremely dirty. For whatever reason, Rockstar decided to throw it in the Supers class, where it's unfortunately massively outperformed by, you know, the actual supercars in that class. Now despite that, the Sultan RS still handles great, and because it's all-wheel drive, it's got great traction, and is awesome for rallying, especially with that boxer engine sound. In addition to that, the Karen Sultan RS is another awesome some all-wheel drive drift car when you stance it manually and equip those low grip tires. This is especially awesome considering that you can style this car after Sean's Evo from the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, and you can also drift it really well in game. Although there's a lot of things going against the Sultan RS, I think that for the price it's well worth it considering the amount of modifications you have access to and the amount of fun you can have with this car. And for the final entry on this list, we have the most recent JDM car to come to GTA 5, the Maibatsu Monstrosity. This car is especially unique given its inspiration after the Mitsubishi Pajero, and although no one really wanted this car, it was definitely a really cool addition to the game in my opinion. Plus, it's pretty much the only other off-road JDM car that we have besides the Anis Hellion. Now, although this car is extremely expensive at about $1.5 million for the base price, it isn't too far off some of the other cars that we've showcased on this list. It will get a especially pricey though if you decide to add the $1.1 million HSW upgrade if you're on next generation consoles. Now as for customization, the monstrosity offers a decent amount of variety all over the place, but does lack interior customization and is generally pretty buggy. Despite that though, the monstrosity is still an absolute blast to drive, regardless of whether or not you've applied the HSW upgrade. Even without it, the monstrosity is still towards the top of the off-roads class in terms of performance, and obviously it's all-wheel drive so it's got great traction and speed to drive both on and off-road very very quickly. And after the HSW upgrade is applied, the monstrosity is actually one of the fastest overall cars in the game. Sure, you've got to pay to play with this car, but I think it's well worth it and you can have an absolute blast driving this thing. So that is a wrap for my list of the best JDM cars in GTA 5 as of 2023. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and agreed with most, if not all, of my top 10 picks. As always, feel free to leave any questions or feedback down in the comments, and consider liking this video and or subscribing to my channel if you like what you see. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and have an awesome day.